That's so Jim Martin, Newport Pems, Market Street, sun coming from the left, hitting the building to the right. Um, sketch, just simplifying everything down, just get a handle on it. So that's the end painting, it's quite brief. Um, okay, this is the painting process. Start off with um, <coughs> yellow ochre on the left, the sun's coming from the left. So, shove that in. And then there's cobalt blue on the right. Okay, this is now speeded up to 500%. Um, I knock that colour back a bit with a bit of neutral tint on it because I don't want the colours to be too bright, too sugary. Um, that there is yellow ochre. So I'm trying to get as much detail done in this first wash as possible. Uh, red in the painting where the shadow is going to be. To give it a glow underneath. So just in the distance, probably add a bit of um, a bit of white to that paint in the distance just to give it a cloudy, smoky kind of feeling. So again, try and put as much detail on as quickly as possible to maintain that sense of fluidity, really. Red in the painting underneath the, inside the windows. Um, plan is just to give it a glow again. Red brick uh, chimneys. This is a nice sharp Joseph Sputnik brush. It's um, synthetic but it holds a lot of water. That comes to a really good point. Uh, the paper is sawn at Waterford, um, £140 uh, rough paper. So you get that nice uh, dry brush effect with it. Okay, the shadow's going on. I've tried to keep this as fresh as possible. I think watercolor looks brilliant when it's it's not messed around with too much, so... Anyway, we'll see. Nice bit of dry brush in the end of that building. Okay, I think this is now normal time again. Chimneys. Architectural detail. Okay, this is times five speed now. <laughs> Cars. Yeah, it's a good sharp brush. This one is it's. Uh, yeah, lovely calligraphic strokes you can use on it, it's brilliant. So I got blue um, on the far left, the idea that it's, it's going to be kind of bleached out towards the sky and it'll have a lot of reflected light. So um, it's partly a photographic effect, partly um, a kind of logical effect that you get in your eye as well. Uh, it just looks right. So this paint was quite dark. Um, it doesn't dry very dark though. So I have to put another wash on again. Shadows. 
Shadows they tend to be bluer towards the the end when they're out in the open and darker towards the in in the sort of sheltered areas. Nice bit of dry brush there with that shadow. Just just gives it a bit of life and movement. So I'm adding a bit of water now to um, again get some sort of sense of movement into it, left and right. It's a messy process. So I got rid of that white patch on the left because I think that might be a bit too distracting. Um, yeah. So this is back now to normal time. Uh, that's probably still wet on the left so I am using quite thick paint so it doesn't run around too much and just putting the rough details in. Just bits of shadows and whatever. Telegraph poles, same idea that they're quite light towards the top, they've been kind of bleached out. It's kind of cobalt blue, mixed a bit of neutral tint and a bit of um, white, probably. It, I'm a fan of using white in watercolour. I mean, most watercolourists do it. They use it for distance, they use it to knock things back, these are for highlights. Um, yeah, most of them do. Alvaro, Castanet, Josie Sabutnik, that guy, Keith Hornblower, John Singer Sargent. It's it's a myth to say that it's not used in watercolour. Maybe some don't, but 90% of watercolours do. There we are, nice bit of gouache white. Nothing wrong with it. So this is normal time. Yeah, again, you see that that's dried too light on the bottom left. So um, I'm probably putting on now um, just neutral tint straight from the tube, which is Alice French Ultramarine. Yeah, incredibly thick, incredibly dark paint. Um, I have preferred to do this just on the second wash and to judge it right, but um, no, nope, I misjudged it. So that dark wall, small, low wall on the left makes the shadows appear a lot more luminous. Okay, this is the final wash. Ah. Yes. So this is me thinking out loud. Now, I don't really know what I'm doing again at this point. So I'm whistling to distract myself. I'm trying to <laughs> channel my unconscious at this point, I think. So I'm... Yeah, I'm whistling <laughs> in order to stop the voices in my head, I think that's what it is. Just to stop me thinking. Yep, I think that's worked. <laughs> 